tonight. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's really praise the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We love you tonight. We bless your name and we give you glory. We worship you, Lord. We just uh, desire your presence, even in this place, more than anything else. Lord, our heart's prayer and our heart's desire is that the Holy Ghost will move in this place tonight. That, Father, your presence will saturate this place. Lord, your glory will fill every heart, every life. Lord, that's our prayer, oh God, that's our prayer. We want you, we need you. We desire you, Father. It's you that we want. It's you that we desire, Lord. It's you that we long for. Lord, we cannot help ourselves. It's only you that can help our lives. And we therefore dedicate our lives before you tonight. And we welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. We welcome the mighty Father God to move in our midst in a powerful way tonight. We worship and honor your presence, our Father. We just give you glory and honor in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we want to just agree together as a people that your presence will have preeminence in this place and that you will have your way oh god do as you desire in each of our lives do as you desire corporately together that you will be glorified at the end of the day we take authority of every power of darkness every force of evil every principality every man of frustration and confusion we bind it in the name of jesus we decree and declare that this place is territory for the lord right now even as the lord decreed unto moses your place where you stand is holy ground we now declare and declare and pronounce that this is holy ground and no evil no power no devil no spirit no demonic principality can even come close to this place because the glory of god is here and this is a meeting ground for God and his people tonight and we give God God the glory and the praise and the honor thank you father have your way and do as you please tonight in Jesus name and everybody shouted amen, amen and amen praise the Lord glory to God God bless you so much please say uh, uh, hello to your neighbor give them a high five and uh, tell them these are greetings from brother John amen and amen glory to God Amen. I want to invite my daughter to just come. If you can just come and, uh, and just say a, a quick hello. Hallelujah. This is my daughter. Hallelujah. Just tell us your name and say hello to the church. My name is Joanna and I'm happy to be here. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. She desired to come and to be with us tonight. And so I'm happy to have her with us tonight in the presence of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I so much appreciate Bishop uh, for the time that we've been together and just sharing together over the last uh, couple of days. It's really a joy. It's been a blessing for me to partake of what God is sharing with you. Amen. You know, it's wonderful for, for me because I, you know, I, I, I don't know what God wants to tell you. But every time I hear from the Lord concerning what to share, then I also partake of the same. Amen, because it is, a, it, is a, it is a wonderful time, a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God, to just hear him speaking to our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Tonight we just want to finish up our time together by um, looking into the word of God and, and sharing a few thoughts that the Holy Spirit would just you know, desire for us to share today. And I want to just appreciate because the last, over the last several days we've been looking at some areas really that uh, address, well, really that speak to the core passions of this house. And I really felt that the Lord was stirring the core passions of this house, which is to, you know, really the, the desire in this house is to build people to raise men and women of God, to, to raise up uh, servants of God, to develop people. Everybody that comes to this house, every individual that comes, they are a diamond in the rough. They have something of value inside of them. It just needs to be discovered. It just needs to be developed. And every individual in this place has something of value in their lives. They have something unique. You know, it takes all of us to express God. God is so big. God is so unique. God can do so many different things that he, you know, one individual is not enough. Hallelujah. Only Jesus is enough to represent God in all his fullness. But otherwise, because God has desired for us to be a building and a house through which he, you know, her building he inhabits and through which he expresses himself, it's going to take all of us to express a little bit of God. Moses will express a certain portion. She will express a certain portion. Pastor Shikuku will express another portion. You know, Pastor Fra Francis, everybody else will express some bit of God. And by the time we all express who God is in and through us, we'll have expressed God fully. 
Hallelujah. That's why every one of us should not deny the rest of us what God has put inside of us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are special. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them you are special. And look at the one on the other side and tell them you're looking at someone special. Amen. And so there's a process that God wants us to go through in order to, not to, 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 to come from the pro potential stage to come to the product stage. And we talked about just the importance and one of the key things in, uh, in that process is to learn to take responsibility. Like Bishop already mentioned. And yesterday we were talking about the value of really using the word. The key responsibilities we've, we've um, been talking about. The first one is just the importance of staying connected to Jesus. It's our personal responsibility to stay connected to Jesus. Amen. That's, that's our personal responsibility. And yesterday we were talking about the importance and the, the, the responsibility of using the word. You know, making use of the word. We grow, we mature, like Bishop was saying, by reason of use. Amen. As we use the word, as we apply the word, that's what brings growth in our lives. Paul said to the Ephesian elders, he said, I now, you'll never see my face again. This is the last time you'll see me. I guarantee you, you'll never see me again. If, uh, in the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 32, he said to the Ephesian elders, he said, you won't see me again, but I want to now, as I leave you, I commend you unto God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Hallelujah. Paul knew that if, I, if, anything, if there's anything I can leave behind, it's the ability, it's, it's rather it's the grace of God and the word of God to build these elders up and give them the inheritance that God has ordained for them. And we're talking about the building process, growing up process, maturing process. Maturity is measured by one's ability to carry responsibility. And so it comes back down to the whole issue of being able to be responsible. And so, you know, this is, this is something that is so important. The word of God is what builds us up and enables us to enter into the fullness of what God has prepared for us. It's built, it builds, it, it matures us. And I, I don't want to belabor what Bishop already mentioned because without being uh, at a certain level of maturity, there are certain blessings, there are certain inheritances we cannot access because we are still immature as far as that particular blessing is concerned. Hallelujah. Now, if that's, the, if that's the case, then it means, because this is a house where people are built, hallelujah, glory to God. Because this is a house where people are built, glory to God. Oh, thank you, Father. Because this is a place that God has designed and, and placed, you know, an anointing for building people. Then it means that for this church and for the membership of this church to reach their fullness, they have got to be a lover of the word. You've got to be a lover of the word. Because loving the word is basically loving the process of developing yourself into the fullness of what God has for you. I just sense it in my heart right now that we just need to rise up on our feet and just pray in the Holy Ghost for just a few moments. Amen. Let's just, let's just lift up our voices and, and, and talk to God and just let's use our prayer language and just uh, for just a minute or two, let's just pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Koraba Santa Labushikaya. Mambro Sokonta Riabo Seketai. Reke Shatalaba. Aha. Yes, God. Mariso Kotala Mandora Bakatasha. Mampo Shokondro Bose Talabaka. Risa Tola Barianto Romanto. Risa Mundasha Kabula Karatala. Risa Mandisha Kabura Tamando. Repe Setali. Yabarinto Romoshanga, Rekosa Kabila Koselebeta, Romunta Rabash and Roboso, Reke Setanda Labokoya, Mempo Shokondra Marinta Ramazinta, Ribosa Ribos and Robose Kebataya, Mampo Sila Kalibora, Karama Rebese Ha, Yes God, Yes God, Yes God, Repe Setota, Mampo Sotola, Mempo Sotolia, Remenikisa, Reke Setalia, Rombo Roshite, Roko Sondolo, Mampa Shalaki Sakatalabaka, Remando Robosete. Rebeketa, Reseto Romondia Rebesote, Reshanana Masondra Beretoya, Rekosha Catala Baromondo, Membosha Candrama Zaminta, Yescalo, Resketo, Ramasete, Romosota, Rebesete, Remenosuka, Liprosoto Riamanaki Sata, Rekesetula Bariando Robohoya, Yes God, Yes Lord, Yes Lord, Yes Lord, Mmm. Mandole Casaba, Membres de Tasho, Rimanda Socon, Mampes Italia, Ronta Rabise, Ricky Citalo, Rocos Atalaba, Membos Otolebe Shaka Talamacaca, Hey, 
glory yes 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 break forth break forth break forth break forth break forth break forth the voice of the lord breaks the live the cedars of lebanon marie carabo the voice the voice the voice the voice of the lord breaking 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 the cedars of lebanon masaka talabaka masondo robotolo the voice of the lord the voice of the lord the voice of the lord masia tola carabando robote ramando rosso to ribeshe kaya mambo sakatila mariando rebeta oh glory to god manda rabo shindre rebe ramanda sa yes god yes god so Sokasa, 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 Mashaka Labunda, Ramunta Labakaya, Remonta Rabis and Ramona, Mombrisa Rekira Boruta, Rika Rabusa Raminto Robise Kebayaka. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Son of God. Hallelujah to the Father God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the Holy Ghost. Marisa Katalabako Karamaya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Masato Raman Tarabaya Zisto Takita Rosha Caraban to Romozan Talam Masia to Rebis in Dasha Kundrama Zandishan. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. Mm. <laughs> Seta dura si taribo se tere basara barari tarama ratanda rabo se ke taraba shetaya. Zakali karabo shoro tamandere si tatarabo hotamana. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Glory, glory, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, The Lord is here. The Lord is here. Lord, we just reverence you tonight. We respect your holiness, Lord. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We love you. 
We honor you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for honoring us with your presence, Lord. We are grateful and we are thankful tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying tonight that tonight is deliverance night. Tonight is deliverance night. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is going to visit many of us tonight and bring deliverance into our lives. Hallelujah. Lord, we just receive, we just welcome your presence. Lord, have your way. We just surrender to you. And Lord, whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit, thank you that you'll bring deliverance into our lives tonight. We receive it, we expect it, we anticipate it, Lord. We look forward to it in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Hallelujah. You know, while we are sharing the word, if, if, if God's spirit touches your heart and you begin experiencing your freedom, just receive it. It won't bother me one bit if you are receiving your deliverance and receiving your freedom while we are going on. Just feel free. It is wonderful. The main thing is God touches you. So if God begins to deal with you and touch your heart, forget about who is up here. You just connect with the Holy Spirit and let God continue to work a work in your heart. So just be open and just, you know, let's receive, you know, um, the house of God is a wonderful place. It's a place of freedom. It's a place of healing. It's a place of receiving. Hallelujah. And God is in charge. Glory to God. God is a good God. And so, Father, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen and Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. So there's a greatness that God has put in every one of us. But that greatness will be realized as we grow and develop and mature to a certain level that God then releases that inheritance into our lives to manifest. And so we're sharing that, you know, for, for if, if that's the calling of this house, if that's the passion of this house, because that's where, that's the passion of this house, then it means everyone who is called to be, everyone who is planted in this house, has a, has a divine calling to love the word. Because it is the word that builds us up and brings us to that level. So we've got to be people who love the word. Because we want to grow up to the fullness of who we are supposed to be. But it's the word that grows us up. So we've got to love it. And the more we love it, the more it builds us up in Jesus' name. Now, a good example of someone in scripture that loved the word of God is the writer of Psalms, uh, Psalm 119. If you remember that scripture, Psalm 119 is a, is a testimony of the writer to the passion that he has for the love of, of the love of uh, the, the, the is, it's an expression of the love he has for the word of God. He desire, he loves the word. Every every other sentence, he's talking about how much he loves the word, how much he appreciates the word of God, how much he's appreciating the testimonies of God, the judgments of God. Every every other statement he does so. In fact, Psalm 119 is an acrostic of the Hebrew alphabet. He begins all the way from the Aleph, the first letter, all the way to Tav, the last letter. And he speaks about, he actually um, uh, uh, talks about the value or the love of the word of God beginning with each of those, uh, of those letters. From Aleph, the first eight verses all start with Aleph in the Hebrew. They all have a, they begin with Aleph. So he's basically extolling the word of God as we would say it in our day from A to Z. 
He's talking about the beauty of the word of God. And, and so he uses the, 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 the Hebrew alphabet from A, from Aleph to Gimel to Dalet to all the others. And he's talking about all of those eight verses within each block. They all start with the letter of that, alphabet, that particular letter in the alphabet. And so the psalmist begins to write and talk about the word of God. In fact, by the time you get to Psalm 119 verse 97, verse 100, if you can, I mean verse 97 to 100, if you can turn there for just a moment. Hallelujah. Psalm 119 verse 97 up to verse 100, we'll read that. Just the, the, the appreciation he has for the word of God. How much he appreciates the word. How, how, how he values the word. He's so in love with the word of God. And he keeps talking about it over and over again. By the time he gets to verse 97, he shouts and he exclaims as follows. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. That's his, that's his testimony here. He says, oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 98, you, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. Come on now. He's realized some things that happen when you love the word of God. He says, you, through, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me the commandments of god are ever with me you see this the, the, this psalmist the way he values the word and the things he's discovered that the word does in his life as he's been walking through the word as he's been using the word of god he's discovered that actually by applying himself to the word of god he becomes wiser than his enemies but next verse look at verse 99 i love this verse it says i have no i have listen i have more understanding than all my teachers combined hallelujah why for your testimonies, thank you, my brother. For your testimonies are my meditation. He's saying, in fact, because of applying the word of God, the word of God has so promoted me that I'm actually wiser than all my teachers. Do you know there are people who can teach you and they are limited to what they can tell you? There are certain limitations that they have by virtue of their exposure, by virtue of their background, by virtue of their personality, by virtue of everything. He says, I have more understanding by, by, through what means? Simply by applying myself to the word of God. That's how powerful the word of God is. It elevates me ahead of and above those who are supposed to teach me. But because I love the word of God, I'm wiser than them. Look at verse 100. I love this as well. Look at this. I understand more than the ancients. <laughs> I have more understanding than the ancients. Ancients. Why? Because I keep your precepts. In, uh, if you look in the, in the, in the, in the margin of the scriptures, there you'll discover when it says ancients, it's actually talking about the aged. Okay? More than waze wakale. Unajua tunasema kwamba waze ndi wanajua kila kitu waze ukumbuka. Sindiyo? Amen? The psalmist is saying, I may be young. But through your word, I have more understanding than people who are older than me. He is wiser than his enemies, which means he has victory. He is wiser than his teachers, which means he has great understanding. And he's even wiser than the aged, which means he has greater information, more understanding than even the people who live before him. He, you know, he, which means he is well able hata kuandika methali yae mwenyewe sasa manake. Akona understanding hata nazidi wale ambao lizitunga methali. Hallelujah. So for you to have, for, for, for you and I to, to be a member of this congregation, we've come to come to this level where we love the word as much. Because look at what the word of God will do. Not only will it build you up, but as you use it, these are all the things that happen to you. Now the question I had is, why did the psalmist have such a love for the word of God? Why did he have such a passion for the word of God? And I realized something, come on now, I realized something. The reason why the psalmist had such a love for the word of God is because the psalmist had a great interaction with the author of the word come on now the author of the word was his friend and so because he had a great interaction with the author of the word he had a great interaction with the word of god if you're gonna love the word of god then he begins with first and foremost loving the author of that word glory to god if you look at psalm 119 verse 18 i love this scripture i love that uh, that uh, verse number 18 there the psalmist in writing the verses there he says open my eyes that i may see wondrous things out of your law he knows that the one who wrote <clears throat> the one who wrote this word is alive and well and if i ask him if i talk to him he can actually tell me what exactly he meant when he was writing this word and so he prays he says oh father god open my eyes that i might see what wondrous things out of thy law he knows that there are certain things that are hidden he knows that there are certain things that are secrets in the word of god you know there are certain things that you get juju but there are certain things that you have to dig into the word of god to get at what is supposed to be got not for you 
Hallelujah. And so because he learned this secret, come on, and this is really key for where we are going tonight. It's so important for us to appreciate the fact that the psalmist, because he understood that by the way, I have access to the author of this thing. I have the author, I have, I have a, it's, it's possible for me to interact with the author. Now, therefore, because I have access to him, I'm going to ask him to tell me, what did you mean by this scripture? What did Moses mean when he said ABCD? Because of that, he had such a, 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 an ability to dig out understanding, to dig out revelation. He was able to receive insights that other people would not receive. Why? Because he had a, he had a relationship with the author of the word. He had gotten the understanding. These words, when I get this word, as I see, as I apply myself into, into this word, I realize I'm wiser than my enemies. I have, I have constant victory. And guys, even the teachers, even the guys who stand up there at the synagogue or wherever they stand to teach us the word, mm, there are some things I can see. And here we have, oh, eh, praise the Lord. You know, he realized the value of the word of God. Why? Because by interacting with the author, he discovered some things. That's why he could be able to say by the time he got to verse 105, Thy word, O oh God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now that's a wonderful scripture. But did you realize that that verse, he says, thy word is a lamp unto whose feet? So not his, but mine. And then he says, thy word is a lamp unto whose path? Mm. Come on, let me tell you something. When you have an appreciation of the word of God, you'll discover that God's word is, 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 is tailor-made for your situation. He said, my, my, thy word is a lamp unto my feet. You know, where I'm walking right now, it is me who knows what kind of light I need. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. My feet, the word of God is a lamp to my own feet. Not your feet, not her feet, not their feet. I don't know about where their feet are, but I know where my feet are right now. And I've discovered that the word of God is a lamp for my own feet. Glory to God. I want you to, to just appreciate this truth. That God's word is designed and tailor-made to fit your situation. No matter what your background may be. It fits you where, you're at, where you are right at the time you're there. Because every one of us is going through different seasons in life. But the word of God says, God's God. God's, this testimony, this scripture here, is testimony the fact that whatever season of life you're in, glory to God, hallelujah, no matter where you're at in your life, no matter what stage of life you're at, God's word will be applicable and tailor-made exactly for your heart. Every one of us has different backgrounds. There are some of us who come from, you know, backgrounds of where there's nothing good there. You look back in the Giza, tele, 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 Giza, tititi, wanasema kwa kiswahili. Some of us have that kind of background. Some of us have a background where we have a wonderful godly heritage. Our dad may have been a bishop. We have greater light than other people. You know, others of us have come from situations where we really don't know what was going on. There was no even understanding of there was a Bible. Uh, some of us have come from a situation where, you know, our, our genealogy uh, leaves a lot to be desired. There are some hereditary diseases and situations like that in our, in our lineage. God's word is applicable to each of us exactly where we are at. That's why he says thy word is a lamp under my feet. Anyway, that's what the, that's a testimony. That's a testimony of the author of the book of Psalms. Now, here is the good news. You and I today, glory to God. If we are gonna love the word of God, guess what? Hey, let me tell you, there's good news. John 14 26. If a brother can put it on the screen, I want you to just receive the good news that is there available for us today. And that is the fact that just the same way that the uh, the, the, the psalmist had access to the author of the word of God, the author, the inspirer who inspired Moses to speak the Torah, hallelujah. Just as much as the psalmist had access to that author, even so, we also have access to the author of the word of God. The Bible says in John 14 6, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will he will teach you what? All things. And not only that, he will also what? 
bring to your remembrance all the things that I say to you. My brother, my sister, I want to just encourage you tonight. Because of the journey you're on, there is greatness waiting for you. There is something God has deposited in you. It must come out. You are here to be built. You are here to be raised. You are here to be developed. But I want to give you a secret tonight. That that development and that secret, I mean that development and that 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 that, um, um, that, um, um, that development and that raising, that growing is going to come as you connect with the word of God as you connect to the with the scripture that is able to build you up but the good news is this that a scripture hallelujah my brother can put it back up there hallelujah amen yes thank you that scripture that is supposed to build you up guess what you have a teacher that is able to help you understand what you're reading hallelujah I mean, God is making this thing extremely possible for us. He wants us to make it so much so that not only does he give us the scripture, but he gives us the author of the scriptures to teach us the scriptures. The Holy Spirit, when we connect the word of God with the Holy Ghost, ah, let me tell you, your inheritance draweth nigh. Your, your day of greatness draweth nigh. I'm looking at great people here tonight. I don't know who I'm looking at, but I know I'm looking at great people here. There are some people here that are community liberators. There are some people here that are called to affect the nation of Kenya through their influence and impact in the area of marriages. I don't know who I'm speaking to today, but I believe there are some individuals here that God God will use you and raise you up even as bishop was sharing earlier to be a financier of the gospel of the kingdom of god hallelujah and your name will be written down as among those that is stood with the work of god like never before you will set the pace you'll be a pace setter in the kingdom of god by virtue of your obedience as to how god is going to use you glory to god but the bible says for you to be able to get to that place you must have the word of god that builds you up and brings you to the level where you're able to access that greatness well here's the good news you know what happens many times in our lives many times in our lives is a disconnect between the word of god and the author the reason why many times we don't really appreciate the word the reason we don't grow the reason we don't use you see this word benefits us only by reason of use now the reason we don't use the word of god is because many times we don't understand it you know only the food that you digest does you any good Lakini hiyo chakula yote kama haijakuwa digested ita haitakuto haitakufa you just have a bloated tummy and a few days later when you're delivered of that uh, bloatedness that is it hiyo chakula haikukufaidi hata kidogo and you know the challenge is because you are not able to break it down and assimilate it into your system so that you can be able to receive the energy, the vitamins, the proteins, or whatever else that was inside that food that was designed to help you grow. Hallelujah. The good news is this. Mm, many of us in the house of God, we hear the word every Sunday. Bishop or whoever is ministering here preaches the word of God. You hear the word of God. But many of us, you know, we have the challenge where we, we, we lack the word of God. We hear it from this side. But uh, by the time we, we get home, we get home. Ukifika nyuma na ukikuuliza walihubiri nini ile ya kawaida. Sinajua ni ile tu. Bishop sinajua anga napendanga ile mambo ya kawaida. In other words, it was it wasn't able to you weren't able to digest it. The good news tonight is that this word that is supposed to build us up and bring out the greatness in us, we are able to digest it. How? By virtue of linking up with the Holy Spirit who is the author of the word, who is available as a teacher to help us understand that word so we can digest it, so we can use it, so we can mature, so we can carry responsibility, so we can access our inheritance. Hallelujah. The disconnect between the Holy Spirit and the word is many times the issue that keeps us from accessing our inheritance. There's that disconnect. Even you read the Bible, but it's like, Wow. At your wheel, inside a wheel, in another wheel. And the wheel has eyes on top of eyes. 
Mungu nisaidie hiyo nitaelewa nikiwa biguni. This book is not meant for you to understand when you feel biguni. You need to understand it here now. Because every portion of the word of God that is written is beneficial for correction, for reproof, for training in righteousness that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. The reason it is Greek is because we have not accessed the author of the Greek to teach us the Greek. Because he wants us to, listen, this thing is, this word of God is powerful. It's meant for everyone, but it's only understood by a few. Why? Because it is written for family. This book is written for family. Everybody is welcome to be a part of the family of God. But until you become a part of the family of God and embrace the teacher who is the Holy Spirit, you will never be able to understand much of this word. And so most of us float through life on the bare minimum. I understand salvation. I understand like Nicodemus. You know, Nicodemus, Jesus talked to Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, how can I be born again? Now, are you the leader of Israel? And you doesn't understand this to your son. Behold, how shall you lead your people when you doesn't understand the simple basics? If I told you the situation of earth here, you doesn't catch. What if I speak of situation from above? Shall you be there? Why? Because he didn't have, Nicodemus did not have the Holy Ghost inside of him. Ah, but we today have access to the Holy Ghost. The situation is this. Mm, we need to hurry here. The situation is this. Most of us look at the Holy When we hear the Holy Spirit, we think about tongues. When we think, oh, you feel the Holy Spirit? Yes, I speak in tongues. Well, thank you because the Holy Ghost enables you and grants you a powerful prayer language. But by the way, that's not all that the Holy Spirit has come to do. Matter of fact, if you look at what Jesus did, when Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit in John 14 all the way through to John 16, he never mentioned tongues. And he spoke and he said, when I go, I will send him. And when he comes, he will, he will, he will. He never mentioned tongues. The whole time he was talking about, he will be a comforter. He said, he will be a teacher. He will remind you. He will testify of me. He will convict the world of sin. He will guide you into all. Mm, come on, somebody. The Holy Ghost is a person. The Holy Ghost has intelligence. The Holy Ghost has a mouth. The Holy Ghost has feelings. He can be grieved. He speaks. He talks. And he desires to communicate to you. He wants to speak to you the revelation truth. He wants to teach you the word, Jesus said. When he comes, he will teach you all things. There are many things that many people don't know. But you, if you connect to the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things. So you'll be wiser than all your teachers. You'll be wiser than all your enemies. Come on, somebody. In this day and age, when the enemy is craftily skimming things, putting traps and snares all over the place, you need wisdom that comes from above. You need to be able to know, hallelujah, here is a trap of the devil. These are snares of the enemy. I will not walk in that way. The Bible says the steps of a righteous man are ordered and directed by the Lord. How does he do that? By speaking to you by revealing the word opening your mind by opening your spirit to understand the word of God if you are going to grow and access the fullness of what God has prepared for you then there has to be a deliberate intentional connection with the Holy Ghost you must ask him Holy Spirit I want you here right now that's not disrespectful that's passion that's desperation because when you, when you have an interaction with him, all it is to speak is one word. How many of you have experienced sometimes when you, you know, one, one day you're just reading the Bible and just only one thing, even just one word, it's like somebody wrote that word last night, I guarantee you. I mean, I've been reading this Bible for the last so many years. How come I've never seen this? How many of that has happened to you? Amen. That's the Holy Ghost. Now, God's desire is that that should not be an occasional thing. It should be an everyday situation. You walk with such counsel. You walk as though you are actually, it's like you just dropped from heaven because the Spirit of God is with you. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, grieve not the Holy Ghost with whom you've been sealed for the day of redemption. You see, the Holy Ghost can be grieved. The reason why many of us <clears throat> lack revelation in the word of God <clears throat> is because the Holy Ghost of God who is supposed to teach us is grieved by our lifestyle. We are making decisions and choices that grieve him and so he doesn't speak to us and so we lack understanding and so we remain immature 
But God's desire is that you and I rise up and overcome. Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, it's so wonderful to be in the presence of God. You see, uh, even those of us who embrace the Holy Spirit, many times when it comes to the word, we almost have like a, a fear of him. Okay, I can, I can, you know, I don't mind hearing from the Holy Ghost, but you know, what if he tells me something I cannot do? I want to feel goosebumps when I go to church. Ooh, the presence of Ooh. We want that, but we don't want the word of the Lord. Can I tell you something? Hey, let me tell you something. That fear is rooted in a lack of trust. You don't really trust that the Holy Ghost is good. You don't really trust him that he loves you. You're not so sure what he wants is the best for you. You have grown up in a background where your father or your mother or your teacher or your some, some individual has taken so much advantage of you that you've got in the place where you've made up your mind that every authority is only trying to take advantage of me. I'm not going to trust this authority called the Holy Spirit too much because if I do, he as well like all other authorities might want to take advantage of me. Therefore, I'll keep my distance. I'll go to church. I'll tithe, but I will not give my offering. I'll tithe, but I'll not get too close to him because if I get close to him, I might find myself among the Malakote. You see, God's desire is that we walk with trust. You know, the Bible says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Are you in agreement with the Holy Spirit? Is he really, really a confident of your life? Do you really trust him? Can you tell him sincerely? You know, it's, it's very easy to do the Christian thing. Eh? You come to church and you say the Christian thing. Buana, swear, praise the Lord. Buana, ni muema, glory to God. God is so, so good. You know, we, we, we do all these things. But when it comes right down to it, we are not quite able to trust the Lord all the way. And you know, it's very hard to submit to someone you don't trust. If you can't trust him, you can't submit. Because what if? What if? But God is speaking to DC Zimmerman. Mm. Saying, listen, put aside your what ifs. I actually love you. I actually intend the best for you. I want, to, I want you to access the inheritance I put in you. You never know. You might go to Boni for one day and come back the following day. Listen, you can trust the Holy Spirit. And so God is saying, listen, you know, for you, I have the, the deposit I put in you is so huge that if you allow me, if you submit to, your, to my instruction, I will bring you up to the place where when you begin to access what I've deposited in you and for you, you will not even be able to believe that it is you that I had this in store for all along. Hmm. You know, Jesus is the truth. The Bible is the truth about the truth. When a minister preaches, he's preaching the truth about the truth about the truth. When you go home and you tell your neighbor, you're telling them the truth about the truth about the truth about the truth. Problem is, so many of us live in such a low level of truth, we never access truth. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. So when you let the Holy Spirit teach you, it's like the truth himself teaching you about himself. Ah, I pray tonight that you can capture the heart of God. That God is saying, come nigh, draw near unto me. Draw closer to the Holy Spirit. Let me teach you the word. Let me bring you to the other side. Do you know why God gave us, in part, one of the reasons why God gave us the Holy Ghost? Because the Bible says in Jude verse 20, that you, by praying in the Spirit, hallelujah, will build yourselves up in your most holy faith. This thing about building is so important to God that even the Holy Ghost himself is, is made available to you to enable you to be built up. Because God doesn't want to give an inheritance to babies. 
So the Holy Ghost is building you up. The word of God is building you up. He wants you to make it. He wants you to access the, good, the goodness that he has purpose for you. Question is, do, do you allow the spirit of truth to speak to you and to minister to you? Let's just look quickly at four areas that I felt, practical areas that I felt God wanted to speak to us tonight just as we, as we wrap up. Four areas of truth that we need to deal with <clears throat> in our lives right now as we, as we wind up our time together. You know, when you look at the book of Matthew chapter 5 to, verse, uh, to chapter 7, same, same thing if you look at, uh, I think it's Luke chapter 6 to chapter 7. There, the Sermon on the Mount, many people call it the constitution of the believer. It's a New Testament constitution. It's, it, Jesus gives practical teachings about practical areas of life. And, um, you know, the Lord just put about four, four areas that we need to just look at very briefly. We'll touch on them because of time. We don't have much time to go into them in detail. But uh, we just touch on them because these are areas that we need to apply truth. Four practical areas where we need to use God's truth to grow in those areas and be on way on our journey to accessing the fullness of our inheritance. Are you ready? Number one, Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Mm. My brother, just help us there. We'll, uh, we'll run pretty quick here. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there remember what? That your brother has something against you. Next verse. Leave what? Your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Number one is the whole issue of dealing with offense. God's instruction to us is that you and I have no reason absolutely to carry offense. We are not allowed <laughs> to have offense against anybody. God's word says, if you are taking your gift to the altar, and before you go to the altar, you remember, Hiya, my brother has something against me. God's word says, leave your gift at the altar. Go and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. You know, one of the biggest issues in church, Bishop and Mama will tell you, I guarantee you, one of the biggest issues among us believers is offense. Believers offend each other all the time. And then you know what happens? We wait for the other person. If if kama meona ona ni miva, si ya kujia ni tafute. Heya, mi misi mi mindi nda kumfanya maneno. Mutu tona sa tu kujia tu iva tiko sabo miyokoka. Ati na kujoksem. Alafu na chia figure mi nda kumwa. Hey, you ni sikuingi ne. Oi. And we leave that offense where it is, and it blocks our breakthrough. Because Jesus said. Why? Because if you're not reconciled, the blessing will not come. Your gift will not draw a blessing. Many of us, many of us here are offering gifts to the Lord. We're bringing offerings. We're bringing even sacrificial giving. But there is offense between us and somebody in our life. And the, the heavens are blocked. The heavens are brass. No breakthrough. Because of offense. And God's word, which is supposed to build us up and bring us our inheritance, says, here is one portion of scripture you can use. When a brother has offense against you, you go and be reconciled. You take the initiative. Don't wait for them. You take the initiative. Go, seek them out, find them out, sit down together. Jesus even continued to talk about this matter in Matthew 18. The scripture says, go, go by yourself. Talk to him. If he doesn't hear you, go out with another brother. Talk to him. If he doesn't hear you, tell the church. You know, it, there's processes. But God is saying, you be the one to take the initiative to deal with offense. Many individuals here, your blessing is blocked because you have offense against somebody in, in your life. It could be a, a family member. I know. I know, because family members are always the worst, the most difficult to deal with. Because they just feel anger free and they tell you anything. Then they get right into your heart. And you get offended. And it blocks your blessing. Hey, listen, now you're born again. Remember, you're saved. You have a nature that is of your father. And your father loves all people. He can love that husband of yours. He can, you can love that husband of yours. You can love that brother of yours. You can love that your sister who seems to irritate you. Just left, right, and center. Listen, every, and the devil knows. The devil knows. The devil knows. I told you yesterday, somebody said the devil studies the Bible better than other believers. So he knows, aha, uh -huh, if I can bring offense in their life, aha, uh -huh, I've closed the heavens. Nothing. 
because offense is closing the door. Can I encourage you tonight? And if God is going to set free individuals from offense, you take the initiative. Go, find them. Talk to them. Release this thing. Forgive them. Release them. Let them go. Your boss at work, your colleague at work, bringing issues. They always give you the challenging work to do. You're always always left behind to finish up everything everybody else messed up. And you're tired of, you're sick and tired of cleaning up everybody else's messes. And you're offended at them. Hey, hey, what would you prefer? To enjoy being offended at them or to enjoy the breakthrough of God in your life? Ah, we don't have much time. That's number one. The second in Matthew 5, 27, the scripture says, my brother, if you can just throw it up there. So deal with offense. Deal with your offense. I said deal with your offense. Hallelujah. Bishop, I feel it. I feel it. Glory to God. God's going to deliver many lives here tonight. Hallelujah. Kwanzaa, your area of offense, Nimbaya sana. And the devil has been taken advantage. But today the Holy Spirit is saying, you know what? I can teach you how to apply this word. I can reveal it to you and show you how to live it, how to walk out this portion of scripture and you can find your freedom and the heavens will be opened over your life. Matthew 5 7, your father was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. Verse 28, it says what? Mm -hmm. Next verse. Next verse. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Moral purity. Second area. Moral purity. The Holy Spirit is able to teach you and me this scripture to a degree of understanding that we are able to walk it out. Many of us find this scripture impossible to live. Been said 15 years, but every time a scat passes around you, charge. Na sikuisi hata wavai scat. Hiyo ni msuri sana. Sikuisi wanafanga stalking. You know, I'm serious. I was shocked. I was passing in town, you know. You know, I've, uh, these days sometimes I go into town. I don't have my car right now yet. So sometimes I go into town by public means and I go in, I'm walking somewhere. Bishop, I can't look. Because, you know, I'm usually... When I go to town, I'm focusing on where I'm going to be. But I'm not going to be in the town. So now I'm training myself to look up. Nangalia watu vichwa, manjuele za watu. Praise the Lord. Okay, sorry. Bye. Suwezi kuangalia watu. Wanawake wanavaa stalking, wanatembea kwa town stalking. Muchana. Hey! And the Bible says, if any man looks at a woman to lust after her, he has committed adultery already. How many adulterous believers are in the church today? How many commit adultery 15, 16 times a day? And we cry, where is the breakthrough? Where is the breakthrough? But this scripture is impossible to live. I can't. How? 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 The Holy Spirit of God, if you connect with the Holy Ghost, he can reveal this scripture to you and empower you to where you don't have to lust after any woman, even if they walk naked. It is possible. Jesus never gave us a command that we would never fulfill. That would be unfair. So, but this just shows you the standard by which you are supposed to walk. And don't excuse yourself. Excuses are for immature people. Bible says, by now, you should be teachers. But you need somebody else to teach you again the principles of truth, the first principles. Come on, this is the standard we are supposed to walk by. You, as, if you are a brother, you need to walk with such a high level of moral, moral purity, just like Joseph of old, until it was the woman who started lasting after him. Joseph was so much, was so pure. Let me tell you, do you know what? Moral purity is attractive. Men who are clean are attractive. Doesn't matter what they look like on their face necessarily. Doesn't matter what kind of shoes they put on. Now you, you ladies look at me. Suti, Nyuele, Akona Kipara, Aye, Yeye, Uyo. 
Mungu amsaidie kwanza. Amweke muja, ampatie muujiza wa nywele alafu tutaweza kuona baadaye. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Moral purity is attractive. It was so attractive that that uh, Potiphar's wife could not help. She was the one now who was lasting after Joseph. Can I tell you something? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if there are issues in your background and you have, you know, generational issues with sexual problems and bondages in your family line, the Holy Ghost has a knife called the word that is able to sever those links and release you from the bondage to where you're not bound by women's skirts and stockings. And the Holy Ghost will also help you to have an ability to be able to bounce your eyes. You can look away and feel nothing. It is possible. Moral purity. God's challenging this church for practical areas. Deal with your offense. You have no right to be offended with anybody or to be offended at anybody. No right. I said, I'm speaking by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I sense this very strong. You have no right in Jesus Christ to be offended with anybody, including the driver that splashed my tattoo mud on you on your way to church. You have no right. Every time you think you do, you close the doors of the heavens for you and for those around you. And as long as you're under this house, you are closing a section of the window that could have been opened in this house to release blessing and breakthrough into this house for the corporate blessing. Number two, moral purity. Standards. I love what Bishop says. Women happen in any? Ni standard. Come on, women. Can you be different? Can the women of DC Zima wako tofauti kidogo? Can you be can you be recognizable ukipita mtu anaona huyu lazima ananga disease ma huyu huyu mtu azima kwa nini because of how you dress come on women come on you don't have to do this thing you don't have to look like the devil come on look like a woman of god look like you know who you listen you remember that you remember that scripture in 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 in, 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 in mark chapter 4 when jesus went up on the other side and he found the guy who was living by the tombs remember that gadarene the demoniac of the gadarenes what was wrong with him? The Bible says he, was, he used to cut himself and he was run around naked. When Jesus delivered him, he's, the Bible says he was seated, calm, in his right, clothed and in his right mind. So who is trying to get clothes out of everybody's body? Ninan. Because when he was possessed, he was possessed, possessed, he was possessed, he was possessed, he was possessed. Sasa kama mtu hajavaa nguo hiyo inamaanisha ni hebu do mathematics is equal to what hapo fanya hiyo mathematics is equals question mark Come on clothe yourselves with dignity clothe yourselves with modesty hallelujah and walk pure women if you're here you're trying to get married listen you don't have to expose yourself from Cape Town to Cairo let me tell you Somebody says women's dresses start late and they end early. You know, that's a problem. You should never be caught in that situation. <laughs> Listen, you put on the purity of the Holy Spirit. Let the, let the purity of God clothe your heart and see how many Wanaume will come running after you. Because purity is attractive. Purity is attractive. You don't, you don't even have to say anything. You know, there are vibes. Kuna kuanga na vibes. Tuna jonga vibes. Una feel tu. Una, una, ni kama kuna. Una pick waves. We unatua waves za inagani. Kama, kama umeokoka na kama yesu wakundani na umesafisha moyo. Zile waves unatua ni waves zanyo zina. Hata mtu anasema. Hata na, anagopa, anagopa. In fact, you know what women. If, and even, even, even men. When you release pure vibes and clean people avoid you. People say David was a problem. David was a problem. He committed adultery with Bathsheba. Uh -huh. What was she doing bathing on top of the house? Somebody said this, and I like this, and I want to finish this point with this. If you use animal, a woman, if you use animal instincts to attract a man to you, don't be surprised when he starts to act like an animal. So, 
Sasa akianza kukuwa mnyama original unaanza kusangaa. Nilifanya iko nini? Iliendeko ikawa namna kani. Mbona huyu mtu amekuwa mnyama siku hizi? Mbona ni kwa sababu wewe ulimuonyesha kwamba wewe hata wewe una unyama ndani yako? Number three, we want to finish, our time is going. Jesus said, Matthew, Matthew 6.25, Matthew 6.25, the Bible says, Jesus talked talk to his disciples, he said, do not worry, therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, worry is a killer. Many believers today, Jesus said, don't worry, but will you still worry? How many will be honest and say, yeah, sometimes me worry, I worry. We do. And yet Jesus said, don't. But we say, but how can I not? If I don't, who will worry for me? <laughs> I need to worry. You know, my brother, my sister, I wish to get one at a time. Unajua nini? Unajua ni kwa nini zi huwa tunawari? Ni kwa sababu tumesha jifungia mabaraka na hizo area zingine sana. Mpaka sasa baraka ikuangi. Sasa ikifika mahali enyewe kuna itajika there's a need kuna hitaji inakuwa ni shida. Na tunashindwa ni kwa nini lakini ni vile tulishajifungia kitambo sehemu zingine zimefungika. Hakuna baraka. Jesus said don't worry. He said look at the flowers of the field even Solomon was not clothed like them. Why do you worry? Paul picks up the point in in Philippians 4 verse 6. He says therefore he says uh, he says uh, you know do, do, do not be anxious for anything. But in everything, by prayer and or petition, yes, with thanksgiving, do what? Can I challenge you, my brother? Can you go and do that? And of any of you, present your prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Is of it with any combination of it with that when you know a worry in your life? Kill it completely. Lakini sasa, if we, by reason of use, andiko linasema hivyo, lakini tusipolitumia hivyo, if we don't do what the Bible says to do, atuta ingia kufunuo huu, wakupokea baraka za kwetu. Because maturity comes by reason of use. Unatumia lile neno, unaliweka moyoni mwako, ulinila kuchallenge, unalitumia. Nasema, I'm going to Thanksgiving. Father, I thank you that my need is met. Ah, two weeks later, my need is still looking at me in the eye. But God, you are in a challenging like so God, I'm going to use it again. Father, I thank you. My need is met. Ah. That is what that is called process now. Neno lina kuchanganya, lina kutina kukoroga. The Bible says that the word of God, before it came to pass in Joseph's service, it tried him. Neno lita kuchallenge. God, you said, if I pray with thanksgiving, you know, be anxious for nothing. But never by, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made unto God. And then it says, and the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding. Not worry. Not the worry of man, but the peace of God. Shall guard your heart. The Amplified says, shall garrison ni kama kuweka askari moja, sita, saba, around you. Now, the, the, it's peace is your askari. Inasema, wewe utatulia. Na any worry itajaribu kuingia hapa, kinyangarika yote na itongo, worry kijaribu hapa, tunatoa, tunamalisa. Risasi mara moja. You have a garrison of soldiers called peace around your heart. You will never have to worry. But before you can get to that level, ooh, prayer and supplication. Father, I pray, I ask for this petition. Hallelujah. God, I'm, 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 Jesus' name. I believe it is done. I believe God, you have heard my prayer. Therefore, now I give thanks by faith. <laughs> One month later, you are still giving thanks by faith. I thought I, you know, I did what the Bible said. Yes, by reason of, by reason of, use, you are using the word. You are doing well, thank you. Congratulations, you are using the word. The word is going to work. I love what Bishop always says. The word works. Prayer works. It works. Hallelujah. Ah, watch out to Malaysia because of time. 
finally number four. Ah, I love this one. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. And you shall knock. I would rather seek. And you shall find. Knock. And the door will be open to you. Because verse 8 what? Because everyone who asks receives. And he who seeks and he who knocks that's called perseverance. Perseverance. Never quit. Do you trust the Holy Spirit? Yes. Can he bring it to pass? Yes. So I trust him. I've been trusting him for the last six months and I'm still going to continue trusting him. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and in Romans 5, 5, the Bible says, perseverance produces hope and hope produces character and character does not disappoint. See, many times when you're crying for a way out, you're crying for a breakthrough, you're crying for this, God is saying, you know what? The breakthrough can wait. What we need to develop is character in you. So, in the layer, in the process of persevering and pressing in, you're growing. Your character is developing. By the time the breakthrough comes, you're so ready for it, it won't show, it won't show. You know how many people have been thrown away or rather been sidetracked from the faith by virtue of blessing? Have you ever seen those examples? Mutu na barikio baka na backslide. I've not talked to Bishop and Mama about this and the pastors here, but I guarantee you, they can testify. Many people, kanisani, wanakuja hawana kitu, chungaji nyombe, Father in Jesus' name, we agree, oh God, mpatie kazi, kazi nzuri, kazi mbae, tambariki, na nyumba yake, in Jesus' name. Uto na barikiwa unono. Serious, anapata kazi mzuri. Ana, before tulu nasuka mbiya, pastor na jua sasa, you are so busy, kikuwa busy sana kwa kazi sasa, ea, eh, kuzi mama ni kuna kuanga na matope, matope kiasi, so, sa gari unajua sasa, nilipeleka jana car wash, sasa, unajua sasa, eh, na emudia na kuja Monday, sasa, nilisi kutoka nikuwe na gari chafu, hivyo, Sunday, nisha, nisha, nisha peleka, na nilipeleka, wakafanya ata waxing kiasi. Aha. Okay. So the blessing has become a curse now. Sasa the blessing that you work uliko na lia. I remember one time I was praying for a brother. I prayed for him. He was crying tears. I mean yani alikuwa na yani nile mpaka unaona wewe unajua mwanaume akianza kulia bwana. Sasa sasa watu watafanya nini? Eh? Na jamaa lingangana lingangana lingangana. Baadaye Mungu akampatia managerial job at a bank. Serious. Kazi serious. Kidogo Sasa inakuwa faded, faded, faded glory. Faded testimony. You don't know what is happening in the brother's life. So, not, not just myself, many pastors. Na, unataka mchungaji ya kuombe ubarikiwe alafu baraka yegeu kikuwe ishida. So you press through with that issue of yours. So you say, no, this is where I got the blessing. I got, hii baraka ili nipata hapa. Kama kuna kitu kina hama, ni hii kazi, lakini siyo mimi. Manake hapa, ndiyo mungu wali nipata, akanipata. Kama li nipatia hii, ikitaka kuenda, iende, ata nipatia ingine. Kwa sababu kabla ija kwepo, nilikuwepo bila kazi, na mungu waka ileta. Kama inataka kuenda, jantaka kuniziba, niziende kwa mungu, wacha ikae, mungu watatafuta ingine vile, litafuta hii kwanza. Hii na wanakane likuwa ni Trizex, nitaenda kwa mujaribu, alafu nitaenda mchezo. Bana siwe sana. It's important for you to make up your mind. Persevere. Believe God. Trust God. Because the word of God will bring, you know this, it's just like Bishop was saying, there are other things more important than money. When you get to heaven, guess what? You'll be walking on gold. Sasa unatembea kwa thahabu. So, nyumba za mbinguni zitakuwa na material gani? Hatuna vocabulary ya kuzi describe on this side of heaven. Ah, sima meni tuombe. Tutaende, tunaza kuma. Glory to God. I want to request that term. I want to request that we just, for a few moments, I'm so sorry, Bishop, to menda kidogo over. Lakini naomba, kumunda mfupi, I want to request that you mean business with God. Kama mungu wa meonge na roho yako jioni ya leo, what is God speaking? What has God dealt with in your spirit? 
Is it offense? Is it, this, you know, this, uh, this, is, this scriptures, we talked about uh, Matthew 5 to Matthew 7. We just handpicked a few thoughts. But you can actually go through that, those three chapters. Excuse me. You can actually go through those three chapters and, and, and read in further detail and allow the author of the scriptures to teach you and to bring to your attention the matters that are blocking your way, the matters that are keeping you in infancy, the matters that are preventing you from accessing the inheritance that God has prepared for you. I want to just challenge us tonight. Can we just mean business for one minute, for just a moment, and say, God, I want you to speak to my heart. What area do you want to deal with? I am ready to use the word. I want, by reason of use, to grow to maturity to where I'm able to take the word and, 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 and the word is able to build me up and I go to the next level. Can we, just, can we just focus right now? Can we just focus for just a moment? Hallelujah. Spirit of God. Spirit of the living God. Oh, Holy Ghost. Speak to our hearts today. My God. My God. Thank you, Lord. dealing with in my spirit. Holy Spirit of God. What are you just, what are you speaking to me about? Lord, I open my heart. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Ah, satisa kutasa na basan talabaya. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. Murasari rikisari la koroboronda ramandari setere katata shakaraba. Mariri soto resere kere siti riba setandra mashapna. Purity, Lord. Moral purity, Lord. Speak, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You know, in just a few moments, in just a few moments, we're going to come to a point of prayer. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray a sincere prayer. Right now, I just want to invite you, as the Spirit of God has been speaking to you, I just want to invite you right now to just hold that thing that God has spoken to you in your heart. Because we are about to pray. I want you to just receive it and be, be clear about it. You know, I, I want to invite every one of us to locate something. Don't, don't um, settle for just being vague, you know, perhaps, maybe. No. If it's an issue of offense, who? You know, just locate something. Deal with something specific. You know, if it's offense, with who do I need to get reconciled? Just settle, settle. Focus on something tangible. Don't allow yourself to be hazy, hazy, just vague, you know, yeah, in a kuanga. No, specifically, Ninini, what exactly is God putting his finger on tonight in your spirit? Have you seen it? 
Is it clear in your spirit? Is it lust? Is it worry? Is it that you lack perseverance and you quit easily? What is it? What, just look at something. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Now, for all of us, I believe those of us who've located that issue, I want us to follow the example of the father of the house right now. He's right now on his knees before the Lord. And I want you, wherever you are, if you're saying, yes, Holy Spirit, I want to deal with this thing. I don't know how we'll do it, but I want to invite as many of us as possible. Let's feel the front. Let's feel the aisles. Let's just bow our knees before the Lord tonight. And let's just say, Lord, or you could maybe kneel where you're at. I don't know, but just as many of us, if the altars are full, then you can kneel where you are. But let's just come, as many of us as possible, let's just come here to the altar and say, Lord, today I am leaving this thing at the altar. I'm not going to carry this thing anymore. Holy Spirit, now is the time for us to pray. Just pr bring this matter to God. Is it this individual that has been bothering you for so long? Is it this matter that has been an issue for so long? Can you just lay it at the feet of Jesus today? Can you say today, I make a choice, oh God, to forgive them. I know they don't deserve it, but Lord, I release them anyway. I forgive them. I forgive my husband for hurting me so badly. I forgive him for running around with another woman. I forgive him my father. I release him and I pray for his soul. Father, would you save his soul? God, would you just visit him? Father, would you convict him? Oh God, I am here today. Break my heart, oh God. Open my spirit. Spill the contents of my heart. Let me be released, oh God. Would you forgive me, my father? Would you release me, oh God? I am guilty, Lord. I have sinned against you. I have held things in my heart. Tonight I want you to revive me, oh God. I don't want to leave this place without being revived. Holy Spirit, would you revive me? Holy Spirit, would you touch my heart? Spirit of God, can you touch my heart and revive me today? God, I want to forsake. I want to leave these things behind. I don't want to be blocked and held back from my inheritance. So it's not worth it, my father. Any of these matters are not worth my inheritance. So I know you've planned great and big things for me, oh God. I will not allow another human being to close the door for me, for what God has purposed for me. Today, my God, I release the people. I forgive the people. I release worry, oh God. I decide now that I'm going to follow the word. I'm going to use the word by by reason of use, by reason of use, I will use the word of God to be transformed, to be changed. I will take personal responsibility, Lord, to use the word of God and to be changed by the power of the word. Lord, the word of God is able, 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 well able to build me up. The word has the capacity. The word has the ability to build me up. And I want to be built up. Therefore, I yield to the word. I submit to the word. I submit to the word of God. Oh, Spirit of God, would you deliver me? Would you heal me? Would you deliver me, my God? In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father. Father. Oh, Daddy God, do something powerful. Do something, Mary Daddy, in this house. Do something, Mary Daddy, in this house. Oh, Daddy God, do something, Mary Daddy, in this house. Do something powerful in this house. In the name of Jesus, my God, we release people. We forgive people. We forgive people. We release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. Release them. Hallelujah. Mosharia kusita la bakatara mbondere bese atala. My God, my God, my God, my God. Spirit of God. Spirit of the living God. Just deal with it. Just deal with it for just another 30 seconds or something. Just deal with that matter. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God. Give it to God in the name of Jesus. Release it. Release it. 
that tangible thing that came into your spirit as we prayed let it go 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 in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord now while we are bowed our knees bowed before the Lord I really felt that the Holy Ghost would have us pray a prayer of repentance and ask the Holy Spirit to forgive us for how we have not connected with him that we ask him for forgiveness for not trusting him for being afraid of him can we just pray this prayer as our hearts are bowed before the Lord let's just pray a simple prayer just pray for me say dear Holy Spirit Tonight, I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, for not trusting you. Forgive me for not obeying you. Holy Spirit, from this day forward, I desire an intimate fellowship with you. Holy Spirit, take me closer to yourself. I invite you and welcome you closer to myself. Spirit of God, teach me your word. Teach me your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that you hear prayer. Thank you that you answer prayer. And now, Father, by the authority of the name of Jesus, we decree and declare every power of offense is broken now in Jesus' name every issue that the enemy put between me and another person tonight my father we break it in the name of Jesus every issue that is between my brother my sister and another person whether it's a family member or another Christian or a fellow member of this church whoever they are whether they be a pastor or so whatever else Lord tonight by the power of the name of Jesus we break the power of offense we destroy the power of offense in the name of Jesus we decree deliverance from offense in the name of Jesus we dismantle the power of offense from our lives right now Holy Spirit let your fire fall let your fire fall let your fire fall and consume offense from our hearts from our lives in the name of Jesus we break the power of offense. We dismantle it in Jesus' name. Lord, every matter of sexual impurity, every bondage of sexual nature, by the power of the name of Jesus, tonight we destroy it. We break sexual bondage. We break sexual bondage. We destroy it now by the power of the name of Jesus we release men we release women from sexual bondages moral impurity lust and fornication and cleanness in the spirit and cleanness in the mind we destroy it by the power and the fire of the Holy Ghost now be free be released receive your freedom receive your deliverance receive your release now now in the name of Jesus we break it from your life we decree the deliverance of the Holy Spirit over your mind over your heart over your spirit over your body in the name of Jesus father we break the power of worry we address worry now by the authority of the name of Jesus God, we destroy the tendency, the habit of worry. My God, let it be burned by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of God 
burn away worry burn away worry burn away worry in the name of Jesus we refuse to agree with it we refuse to agree with it in the name of Jesus worry we break you from our life by the authority of the name of Jesus by the authority of the name of Jesus and Father we decree that perseverance is our portion we will stand strong we will believe God we will not quit Ali we will continue to believe we will stand strong we will believe God until the end because God cannot lie our God is a faithful God he cannot lie everything he has promised he will do every promise of God he will deliver God your promises are yes and amen they are yes and amen they are yes and amen we will stand in faith we will believe we will continue to believe until the breakthrough manifests in the name of Jesus the son of the living God hallelujah blessed be the name of Jesus we give you glory Father. Ah, I pray tonight you will continue God to deal with us and bring us the fullness of the place you have designed for us. In the precious name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you praise God. We give you glory. <laughs>